first sight, the Earth and its climate seem to have been well studied, with satellites in space and measuring stations on Earth. Like a doctor checking the vital functions of his patient Earth. Because our planet resembles an organism that inhales and exhales gases like CO2, as it were. And scientists want to examine this metabolism worldwide. Um das Klima zu verstehen, in order to understand climate, ultimately, it's like the human organism. We need to understand the metabolism. On Earth, there are also the various organs, which are closely related to each other. Like this ball here. And ecosystems like vegetation and soil are an important strand in the network, which has hitherto not been given sufficient attention. The concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has a strong influence on the climate and it depends on the carbon exchange with the other subsystems on the Earth. These are linked to the so-called Earth system as in a puzzle. Scientists therefore calculate the carbon exchange between the various subsystems like the atmosphere, the oceans and the land areas. But in the case of vegetation and soils, these calculations are mostly based on very rough estimates. Markus Reichstein from the Max Planck Institute for Biogeochemistry in Jena wants to change that by studying how vegetation and soils exchange carbon dioxide with the atmosphere and how this affects climate. For a long time, we didn't know how vegetation really reacts to climate change, how the vegetation and the soils and also the ecosystem together also influence climate change. And now, for the first time, we have reliable data worldwide which describe this interaction precisely. A measuring tower 40 meters high in Heinich National Park in western Thuringia. Here, the scientists measure the gas exchange at the boundary between the biosphere and the atmosphere. Up here, the exchange of gases is particularly intensive, since the air swirls through the treetops. The measuring tower is part of a global network of over 500 stations linked together in what is known as the flux net. To determine the gas exchange between the vegetation and the atmosphere, the concentration of gases that affect the climate is also measured in the vortices of air. That means CO2, water vapor, methane and nitrogen oxide gases. This way we can determine the vertical flow of gases between the atmosphere and the vegetation. The upward and downward streams of air are registered 10 times per second. From this, the flow of CO2 in total can be calculated. In this example, twice as much CO2 passes from the biosphere to the atmosphere as the other way round. With this method, for the first time, we were able to quantify globally how much carbon dioxide is absorbed by the vegetation through photosynthesis, how much is emitted by respiration, and also how much water evaporates. Previously, we only had theoretical calculations, but no well-founded observations. But that was not all. Reichstein fed his model with the data measurements precipitation, temperature, and solar radiation were also taken into account. So thanks to Fluxnet, a global picture was produced. With the help of these data, the scientists can now track down new connections. Under which climatic conditions, for example, do ecosystems produce organic material? And how much CO2 can they fix in doing so? For example, the plants, they absorb CO2 and transform it into biomass through photosynthesis. In this way, they remove CO2 from the atmosphere. The result of the investigation, in an average year, as expected, the tropical rainforests absorb the most CO2. But surprisingly, the second largest absorber of CO2 is the savanna. Its vegetation consists of a thick layer of grass on the ground and occasional trees and shrubs. Photosynthesis is only part of the cycle. Conversely, CO2 is also fed back into the atmosphere by the respiration of plants and ground organisms. So we have a closed cycle in which ultimately more or less the same amount is absorbed as is emitted. As long as humankind does not disrupt the cycle, 
If humankind introduces additional CO2 into the atmosphere, this changes the entire balance of the carbon cycle. If forests are chopped down, the vegetation can fix less carbon dioxide and the soils will often also release more CO2. Slash and burn land clearance has a similar effect. And then more CO2 collects in the atmosphere. And this will fuel climate change. The result may be extreme climatic events such as excessive drought. And this in turn will have drastic effects on the vegetation. Soils also play an important role in the carbon cycle of the biosphere. That is why the scientists are also moving in with a pile core probe. They want to know how climate change influences this ecosystem and what effects it has on the carbon balance worldwide. With the help of the probes, they can determine the level of carbon in the soils and then compare these data with those from the measuring towers and they study how the CO2 emissions change over time, also as a result of climate change. To do this, the samples are dried, sieved and ground up in the Institute for Biogeochemistry in Jena. In order not to distort the values, the scientists sort out the plant remains and small creatures like worms. Then the soil samples are heated to over 1,000 degrees and measured in the mass spectrometer. The result, the upper layers of soil fix about three times as much carbon as the plants. With these data, we've now discovered phenomena which could not be described at all with previous Earth system models. For example, the effect of extreme climatic events on vegetation and soils. Because the soils themselves play a major role in climatic events, like the vegetation in a normal summer, they fix a certain amount of carbon. If this is followed by a drought summer, something drastic happens. Suddenly, as much CO2 can be released as was stored during the previous five years by plants and soil organisms. This feedback mechanism can have a noticeable effect on the CO2 cycle. Markus Reichstein can now feed the Earth system model of the Max Planck Institute with real vegetation and soil data. That means that instead of rough estimates, it has now been expanded by the puzzle piece Biogeosphere. And so the last World Climate Report also contained actual data about the carbon cycle of the vegetation and soil. Our data has given us a substantiated global picture for the first time of how vegetation, soils and climate are interlinked. And this has revolutionized science in our field a little, because for the first time the Earth system models could be improved by means of these data. I think we can be quite proud of that.